Hello and welcome to this video where we will be going over how you can bind models in your racer pages. Now, what do we mean by binding models? Well, essentially, we mean that we have a particular racer page. Now, this page will be a create page. This particular page will be a page where we create products. So we have like different fields where we can create um, a product. Now, all these fields will then be binded to a racer model or to a property on the model if you um, want to get technical. Now, this is the basic terminology, but essentially it just means that all the different input fields that we need will be automatically generated by simply looking at that same property um, or model. And so it will infer what you know sort of type it should be. Should it be like text or should it be um, Booleans or whatever? Um, it will infer that from the model type. And also when we get the actual post, it will also automatically bind it to the model. And so we can easily insert it into the database. So I think that's enough terminology. Let's just jump right to it and see what it's all about. So I have a basic project here and there's actually not really a lot going on. We have, this is a race of projects. We have, um, let's just see here. We have the models, we have a product, simple product with an ID and name and a price. And we have some pages for that. We have a simple index page where we just display a table of all the current project uh, products, just so we can see what we're doing. And then I have created the create page, but it's just empty right now. It's just some basic bootstrap and a create product header. So let's just take it for a spin so you can see what we have right now and what we want to achieve. So right now we can click into the, uh, the uh, products page here and we'll go to the index razor page where we have a blank table right now and we have the create product button. Press that one and we go to the create page. Now this page, I wanna be able to create products. You know, that goes without saying, I guess. So let's see how we can do that and how we can use model binding to make this a really cool experience. So, First off, you know, with Razor Pages, we have the page model and we have the view. So in the view, I know that I want to have some, um, there we go, some input fields. So if we look at the products model here, you can see that we need uh, the ID is the key, primary key, so we don't need anything for that. It will be automatically generated. We need something for the name and for the price. So I could go in here and I could make a form control. This is just bootstrap. And then I could make, you know, this input type of text. I could give it, you know, a name of product name and all this stuff. But what's really cool is that I can get all this done automatically. Um, so let's just see how we do that. So we go into the page model. And first of all, I know that I want to insert this into a database. So the first thing I'm going to do is well, create a property and use my database handler. Uh, there we go to get a connection to the database. Um, if you don't know what I'm doing here, I actually have a video on how you connect to a database that will explain all that I am doing here. Whoops. There we go. So now we have this property uh, underscore DB that will contain a, a handle to the database. So the next thing is that I will create a property and I will make it a product and I will call it product. So 
This is actually a good time to showcase a pretty funny problem because I have a model called product. I am also making product pages. So if I well, wait, there we go. So right now it is saying that, you know, the product is a namespace. It, it doesn't know to use the product model it's actually referring to the product namespace and that is what's causing this problem so i will have to tell it to go into the models folder and use the product class as the type and then it will work so it's just something you can run into um okay so now we have the actual model that we want to bind we want this to be the model we are binding all our data to. So I go back into my view, and now instead of doing this, I can actually just say that this is an input for ASP4, the model dot product dot, um, let's say this is the name field we want here. And there we go. Now it will create the appropriate input field and automatically put in the name and everything for this particular property on this particular model. And we can even do the same thing with the label. Just give it an ASP4. And sometimes you can just find it directly on the product here. It knows that this is the model's product. Um, so you can sometimes just use that directly if it can infer it. Otherwise, you have to type out the model specifically. And that's also everything we need right here. So if we want to do the same thing for the price, we can just copy this. We can say that we are now working with the price in both places. And then it will automatically set this input field to work with the price type. So all there's left to do now is to actually make this a form with a method of post. We will just put everything between that, format the code, and then we simply need a submit button. So a button of type submit, give it some bootstrap, and let's just call it create. Great. So now this should generate the view we're looking for. And we can actually just take this for a spin to see if we have the binding set up correctly so far. So if we go into the products, we will create a product. And we can see now that we have two fields, right? So if I right click and inspect the name field, we can see that it knows this is a text field. It gives it an ID of product name and a name of product name. Great, so it knows that this is the product name field. And if we inspect the price here, it also puts in the text. It says it's a data val number, it must be a number, um, and it you know works with the product price. So everything here looks great, it knows what we are talking about it knows what type of property on the model it is representing so great so now we just need the create button to actually work so i go into the create page model and right now we just have an on get we want to create a on post that returns an i action result there we go and we will just return a redirect to page. We want to go back to the index page after this post has been whoops, completed. We need to make this a string and not a character. There we go. So there are two different ways you can go about this. You could take the product in as a parameter to the method. Oh, this, yeah, it still thinks it's the namespace, so this is poor naming on my part. I could get around this by naming the um, page products, I think. But you can also work with it like this. So this is one way to do it. And now if I, you know, let's just put a breakpoint here and, and run this because then the parameter we are passing into the onPost method 
should actually be filled with the data we bind in the view. So let us go into products, create a product. We will call this a test and we will say the price is 12. Hit the create button and let's hover over the product here. And we can see it gets created, you know, ID of zero um, because it hasn't been assigned anything from the database. Uh, the name is test and the price is 12. So great, it is being binded. So now all this left to do is simply insert this product into the database. And we can simply say db.products is the name of my table. Add, and well, we can actually just press tab because Visual Studio knows what we want to do. And it also knows we want to call the save changes method to actually save the changes. And that's it. When we run this, we should be able to create a product and insert it into the database by using model binding. So let's go into products once more. Create a product. We'll just name this test again, price of 12. Hit create. And we get redirected back to the page and now we can see we have a product created. Amazing. Now, before we round off, I wanna mention there is another way to do this. You can actually remove this part and go up here directly into the, um, where you declare the um, property and you can actually put an annotation and say bind property. If we do that, we will be able to work with this product directly and it is actually a much cleaner way to do it because the, the reason that we declared it before was so that we could access it in the view, right? So we would still have to put in a parameter to the post method that would then bind it up. So we would you know, sort of have two different product models which doesn't really make sense to me. But by adding the bind property model here, it knows that whenever we post something to this page, it will bind this property from the view. And if we take this for a spin, just to verify that it works, it should give us the exact same results, but I just think it's a little bit clearer, a little cleaner, so to speak. Create the product, we will call this a cucumber and with a price of 25. Create that and there we go. So that is all there is to model binding. We get a lot of cool functionality and it is just, you know, it's one of those magical, powerful things that .NET can do for us. Now, before we uh, round off, I want to show you just one more annotation. We have an annotation called bind properties. And if we assign that to the class itself, it will actually put the bind property on every single property we have defined. So like, you know, we could have a product here, we could have a category, we could have whatever, we could, you know, lots of different models that would get binded in the view. And instead of having to put bind property on each single one, we could remove that and simply say bind properties and it will bind all the properties in the class. So it depends on you know what you're doing. If you're just doing one or two models, I would probably just use bind property. If you're doing a lot more, I would use it on the class itself and bind the properties. And that's actually all there is to it. That is how you can bind. Let's just see. Um, where is it? There. That is how you can bind the model to the view. And now we can bind that all together and just have all this free functionality where you don't have to worry um, about all that stuff. And it just, you know, it just hands you the object for free and you can just, you know, with two lines insert it into the database. It is amazing and I really love it. So um, yeah, that's how you do it. Thanks a lot for watching and uh, I hope to see you again in another video. Ciao.